If you are an aspiring data scientist or machine learning engineer, you probably must have come across the term overfitting many a times and you must have wondered what it means. Well, today we are going to relieve you of that doubt or a query with this thorough session solely dedicated to help you understand the notion of overfitting. But before we begin with this session, make sure to enable that subscribe button and bell icon so that you'll never miss any update coming from IntelliPath YouTube channel. First of all, we shall take a look at agenda for this session. We'll begin this session by building basic intuition behind overfitting. After that, we'll formally define the term overfitting and then we'll talk about how you can detect as well as prevent overfitting in machine learning problem context. I hope I have made myself clear with the agenda. So let's get started with the session. Let us try and build the basic intuition for overfitting. What we'll do is, we'll try to mold the notion of overfitting in real life example to sort of build a better understanding of it. You must have attended college, right? What occurs there? We are first taught a subject and then we are tested to see how much we have learned. In machine learning, we do exactly the same thing. We train the model on a data set, usually known as the training data set or you can consider it as a study material and then we assess how well the model learned just like the students are tested. Let us say we have two students Alex and Rachel. Both have been taught the same subject, let's say mathematics. First, we'll try to understand their learning process. Alex had gone through each problem taught in class and learned it by heart without generalizing the concept. On the other hand, Rachel also went through the class notes but didn't learn them by heart. She generalized the concept. Now when we have seen their learning process, it's time to evaluate their learning. The instructor of the course took an assessment from class notes only. Who do you think scored more? Alex scored 90%. Boom. Where on the other hand, Rachel scored 80% which is not bad at all. At this point, you must be thinking that the learning process of Alex is better than Rachel. Wait, let us conduct one more test and see the result. The instructor took another test this time not from the class notes but from the outside to check how well they are good at concept. Who do you think scored more this time? This time Alex scored 50% whereas on the other hand Rachel scored 75%. Wait, what just happened? Bam! Now what do you say who is best among them? Alex or Rachel? That is the entire overfitting concept in machine learning. Evaluation from the class notes is referred to as training set assessment whereas assessment from outside the class notes is referred as testing set assessment. We might argue that Alex learning was overfitting since he memorized all the in-class notes but did not generalize the concept, which is critical for developing any machine learning model. What evidence do we have? Well, Alex received a score 90% on a training set and only 50% on the testing set, which was conducted on unseen material. The considerable decrease in test set accuracy indicates that the model has overfitted the training data and is unable to generalize the data set. So guys, basically as we were told in schools, instead of by hurting, we should try to generalize the concept like Rachel did. Machine learning takes inspiration from this exact model. Here, we build models using historical data to sort of predict the possible future outcomes on unseen data. And because of that, the generalization of the data becomes a very important task in model building process. Our model performance should be similar on both training set and test set rather than biased on either one. We must consider both training and test set accuracies and then reach a conclusion about whether our model is a good fit or overfit. Generally, a model with 5% difference between training accuracy and testing accuracy is considered as the model with good fitting. I hope now you guys sort of understand the basic notion behind the concept of overfitting. Next, we'll theoretically try to define and formalize it more. Machine learning model building process can be better understood in the form of approximating target function. Let's say f here is the approximating target function which converts the input data x to an output variable y. This characterization right here describes the range of classification and prediction problems and the machine learning algorithms that can be used to address them. An important consideration in learning this approximation function from the training data is contemplating how well the model generalizes to new data. 
generalization is important because the data we collect is only a sample. It is incomplete and noisy. And if we provide the outer knowledge to non-generalized models, there is a possibility that the predictions made might be completely wrong. A successful machine learning model should be able to generalize well from training data to any data from the problem domain. This enables us to make future predictions based on data that the model has never seen before. But there are two major problems that arise here named as underfitting and overfitting. Guys, the overfitting basically refers to a model that models the training data too well. This happens when a model learns the details and noise in the training data to the extent that it negatively impacts the performance of the model on new data. This means that the noise or random fluctuations in the training data is picked up and learned as concepts by the model. The problem is that these concepts do not apply to new data and negatively impact the model's ability to generalize. Overfitting is more likely to happen with non-parametric and non-linear models that have more flexibility when learning a target function. So basically for these models, the amount of characteristics a model will have to learn will be quite substantial. That is the reason why many non-parametric machine learning algorithms also include parameters or techniques to limit and constrain how much details the model learns. There are few more statistical terms that can help us formalize overfitting more. They are bias and variance. So guys, bias is the difference between the average prediction of our model and the correct value which we are trying to predict. Basically, the model with high bias pays very little attention to the training data and oversimplifies the model and eventually it leads to high error on both the training and test data. Whereas, variance is the variability of model prediction for a given data point or a value which tells us the spread of our data. Model with high variance pays a lot of attention to training data and does not generalize on the data which it hasn't seen before. As a result, such models perform very well on training data but have high error rates on test data. So if I have to graphically represent this, I'll have four different combinations. High bias and low variance for first. High bias means that the difference between prediction and correct value is high. So look at the diagram right here. There are three circles. The inner circle represents the given correct output values and the outer circle represents the worst case prediction made by the model. Even though the elements are pretty close to each other, the prediction made by the model can turn out to be real mess. And this particular scenario is considered as underfitting. Then we have high variance and high bias. In this case, predictions are more inclined towards inaccuracy and inconsistency because the variance is also high and the bias is also high. Third up is low variance and low bias. In this case, the model will be optimally fit to the both train and test data. As you can see in this diagram, all the predictions emerge towards the correct given values. Finally, we have high variance and low bias. In this particular case, data will be spread across unsymmetrically and thus the model will need to focus more on data instead of generalization. This will lead to the overtraining of data and thus the cost will decrease. However, when the test data is applied, the model will make wrong predictions and thus accuracy will be really less. Now that we have understood the concept of overfitting, let's move forward and contemplate how we can detect the overfitting in our machine learning model. So the main challenge with overfitting is to estimate the accuracy of the performance of model with the new data. We'd not be able to estimate the accuracy until we actually test it, right? To address this problem, what we can do is we can split the initial data set into training and test data sets. With this technique, we can actually approximate how well our model will perform with new data. For example, we have 85% accuracy on the training set and a 50% accuracy on a test set, then automatically it will be a red flag for the model, isn't it? Reason being, it's not efficient enough and when exposed to different data set, it resembles different accuracy levels. Another way to detect overfitting is to start with simplistic model that will serve as a benchmark. So with this approach, if you try more complex algorithms, you'll be able to understand if the additional complexity is even worthwhile for the model or not. 
This approach is commonly referred to as Occam's razor test. Occam's razor suggests that in machine learning, we should prefer simpler models with fewer coefficients. Repeat. Occam's razor suggests that in machine learning, we should prefer simpler models with fewer coefficients over complex models like ensembles. Taken at face value, the razor is a heuristic that suggests more complex hypotheses make more assumption that in turn will make them too narrow and not generalize well. So suppose for a singular problem, you have two models which have absolutely comparable complexities. In that case, you'll be choosing the simplistic model from both. Detecting overfitting is always a good practice guys. Alas, there are also several ways to actually avoid the overfitting. So moving forward, let's take a look at these several ways of avoiding overfitting. The methods we have for this purpose are cross validation, training with more data, then we have removing features, early stopping, regularization and ensembling as well. Let's talk about each one of them in detail. First, we have cross validation. This is one of the most powerful methods of preventing overfitting. The idea behind this technique is to use initial training data to generalize mini train test plates and then use these plates to tune your model in a standard k-fold validation. The data is partitioned into k-sets also known as folds and after this the algorithm is trained iteratively on k-1 folds while using the remaining folds as the test set. In applied machine learning cross validation is generally used to assess the skill of machine learning model on unseen data. That is, to use a small sample to assess how the model will perform in general when used to generate predictions on data that was not utilized during the model's training. It is a popular strategy because it is easy to grasp and produces a less biased or optimistic assessment of model competence than other methods such as simple train test split that we have discovered previously. Now let's talk about training with more data and how it will help in preventing the overfitting in machine learning. This technique does not work always, but it always helps in identifying the signal better. When we are training the model with more data, then it is essential to make sure that data is clean and free from any randomness or inconsistencies. Then only it's going to work for us in preventing or fitting the machine learning model optimally. Then we have removing features. If you have ever worked on machine learning models, you must have come across algorithms that have automatic feature selection parameters. For algorithms that do not have built-in feature selection, we can manually remove a few irrelevant features from the input features to improve generalization. So one way to do is it by deriving a conclusion as to how a feature fits into a model. It is quite similar to debugging the code line by line and in case if a feature is unable to explain the relevancy in the model, we can simply identify them and remove them. We can also use few feature selection heuristics from a starting point as well. So this is how removing features can actually prevent overfitting in machine learning. Next we have early stopping. So till the time we have discussed that while training a large network, there will be a point during training when the model will stop generalizing and start learning the statistical noise in training dataset. This overfitting of the training dataset will result in increase in generalization error, making the model less useful at making predictions on new data. For example, look at this graph available on your screens. As the number of iterations increases, the training error decreases and the model goes into the zone of overfitting. And when the similar model is provided with new unseen data, it makes vague predictions. So instead of overtraining the model, we should stop at the dotted position shown on the graph. Remember guys, the challenge here is that we need to train the network long enough that it is capable of learning the mapping of outputs and inputs, but not training the model so long that it overfits the training data. The one solution that can be proposed to solve this issue is to halt the training. During training, the model is evaluated on a holdout validation dataset after each epoch. If the performance of the model on the validation dataset starts to degrade, that is loss begins to increase and accuracy begins to decrease, then the training process is stopped. The model at that time that training is stopped is then used and is known as to have good generalization performance. 
This procedure is called early stopping and is perhaps one of the oldest and most widely used forms of neural network regularization. That being said, let's move to the next methodology that is regularization. Regularization is a process of artificially forcing a model to be simpler by using a broader range of techniques so it can totally depend on the type of learner that we are using. For example, we can prune a decision tree and we can use a dropout on a neural network or we can actually add a penalty parameter to the cost function in regression as well. So quite often regularization is a hyper parameter as well. It basically means it can be also tuned through cross validation as well. So this is all about regularization. Finally, let's talk about ensembling. Ensemble models are models consisting of multiple models or algorithms. Individual models can be combined through various methods such as bagging, boosting and stacking. In general, we can differentiate between two types of ensembles. They are either based on many weaker models that are stronger together. The example for this will be boosting or fewer well thought of models combined via stacking into a meta model. You can imagine the weaker model as ants. One ant can build ant hill, but the whole colony of ant, well, that's a different story. The second group of ensemble methods is more like Avengers. Every Avenger has a unique skill and they are superheroes already, but they are stronger together. This is because their individual disadvantages are covered by their teammates. We established at the beginning that according to Ockham's razor test, simple models are better. But ensemble modeling is about combining multiple models. So how is that simpler? There is something I didn't mention earlier when talking about Ockham's razor. This test has two interpretations. First one is simplicity is a goal in itself. Second one is simplicity leads to greater accuracy. Turns out the second bit is not always valid. I talked about overfitting and how it occurs when a model or an algorithm overlearns the training data. However, as empirical studies have shown, this doesn't hold true all the time. Additionally, judging complexity by number of models is not ideal. A solution combining multiple models is more complex than one model for sure. However, looking at how a model or algorithm functions that is predicts can help us understand this mystery. Alright, let's go back to the analogy world. When ants are building their ant hills, they need every ant they can get. It's similar for the weak learners. Although, you can still overfit this type of ensemble, so you need to be very very careful. When Avengers meet for the first time, some of them are overconfident and don't appreciate teamwork. But after they go through challenges together, they change and improve for the better. Ensemble modeling averages out the biases of the individual models or methods. This causes the prediction to be more stable with lower variance. In other words, the predictions based on ensemble modeling are simpler in terms of their statistical characteristics. That's all we have for this session today. If you have any queries, please feel free to drop them in the comment box below. And make sure you hit the thumbs up button as well. Until next time, thank you very much. Also. Don't forget to stay tuned with IntelliPath YouTube channel for more technical updates. Just a quick info guys, IntelliPath offers executive post-graduation certification program in data science and machine learning in collaboration with iHub Divya Samparka, IIT Rurki and IntelliPath. Through this course, you will learn a multitude of tools used in the industry such as SQL, Python, machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence and computer vision from the esteemed IIT Roorkee faculties and industry experts. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition. You can check out their testimonials on our Achievers channel whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your career to new heights, so visit the course page link given in the description and take the first steps towards a career growth in the field of data science and machine learning.